Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again uh, with uh, Human Relations Strategies for Success, uh, Individual and Organizational Change. This is Chapter 9. As always, our learning objectives are discuss why change is a fact of the life in the 21st century, uh, list the seven major life changes, describe the seven stages of personal change, compare and contrast models of organizational change, give reasons why employees resist change, and sometimes we are those employees, uh, explain the Kaizen approach uh, to change in the business world, something that my organization uses, and discuss organizational development. Change is a fact of life. If one thing is true or holds true and holds constant is that there will always be change. There are different types of change. So you have emotional and personal change and a necessary and planned change, right? So uh, you may have an emotional, personal change where someone passes away or someone gets married, could be positive, could be negative, and there could also be necessary and planned changes uh, like moving or going away to college. Uh, coping is the ability to deal with change and its effects without allowing them to injure you emotionally, right? So you, you want to make sure that these changes don't injure you emotionally, definitely not physically, uh, but there, there's a possibility that they may injure you emotionally and you have to protect yourself from that. It's essential when changes affect a, a personal life, whether it be a breakup or uh, coming together, or getting with a, a spouse or getting married or something of that nature. Uh, the Holmes Ray uh, Readjustment Scale, it uh, measures the relative impact of many kinds of changes. Uh, it rates changes from uh, 100 to 0 on the basis of their intensity. Uh, it's in your book and it's a, a really good scale and uh, you, you'd be surprised to see how much uh, certain things that are very positive uh, stress you out. Uh, it rates uh, from one to, uh, 100 to a 0 on the basis of their intensity and the adjustment problems they can create. So if you get married, there's going to be adjustment problems. If you get divorced, there's also going to be adjustment problems. It could be positive, could be negative. Uh, there are seven major life changes. Number one is loss, right? So uh, someone, you know, uh, passes away in your family, could be uh, a parent, could be a spouse, could be uh, any type of loved one or just a friend. A separation, somebody could go through a breakup, a uh, divorce, or things of that nature. A relocation, uh, whether it be uh, that you, you leave to go to another state for a job or you leave to go to another state uh, for uh, to go to college or, or, or something like that. Uh, change in relationship uh, could just be that, hey, you know, decided to step it up, take it to another level, and uh, go ahead and go from boyfriend and girlfriend to, to getting married. Change in direction. Uh, you could have a change in direction, change in your path of what you're doing uh, uh, with your life. I've, I've had many changes in dire of direction uh, throughout my life, and uh, you know, some of them have been uh, very good. Some of them have been bad, and I've had to veer my way back to the correct path. A change in health, uh, so it could be you know a negative uh, turn for the worse uh, as far as your health goes. Hopefully not. Hopefully everybody gets a, a positive uh, a turn uh, for their for their health. Uh, start you know utilizing the NutriBullet or start exercising more, uh, starting eating more uh, uh, vegetables and fruits, and and those changes in health will uh, definitely help you out. And then personal growth. I've I've had a great deal of personal growth, especially in the last few years. You know just. Uh, uh, starting to mature more and, and make different types of decisions, uh, starting to think more in regards to things that, that I actually do as opposed to just uh, having a knee-jerk reaction to certain things and, and, and certainly not letting my emotions uh, rule or control exactly what I do. Uh, characteristics of the seven major life changes, they happen to everyone. Loss happens to everyone, uh, promotion, uh, layoffs, all those things have, they happen to everybody. And they cannot be controlled by the individual. Uh, you know, I've been laid off from a company before. It was nothing that I could have done uh, to stop that. Uh, I've had loved ones that have passed away. There was nothing I could do uh, to stop that either. Uh, and each one has its own ripple effect, right? You know, do you, do you go into a deep depression? Uh, do you, you fight your way out of it? Are you able to be emotionally uh, sound and strong for others? And the outcome is experienced before, uh, during, and after an event, right? So it's before, uh, you're running smoothly, then after an event happens, man, you know, you're down in the dumps, and then, you know, a little bit more after you start to readjust and get back to, to normal life. Uh, the seven stages of personal change as you see uh, on this, uh, you know, very basic but very, uh, very 
accurate diagram, you, know, you see it goes from number one to number seven. So you have an emotional standstill. So something happens and you're kind of frozen in time. You can't move. You just sit there. Uh, number two is denial. This this couldn't have happened. I can't believe that this could be the case. Um, number three is anger. Uh, you get mad. Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to uh, my people, my individuals? Then you're in the neutral zone, and that's right there in the middle. Just like if your car was in neutral, uh, you have a, a, a feeling of helplessness and bottoming out and just kind of get depressed and, and really tired and may sleep a little bit more. And uh, six, you're, you're back on the upswing uh, to experimenting. Uh, seven, completion. It's kind of like a, what they call a rebirth, and, and it's a new you. So you don't forget about the person or what, what happened or what occurred, but you kind of, uh, of, of somewhat move past it and go back to uh, living your normal life. But you, you don't forget about those individuals. Uh, and here they are listed out, the seven stages of personal change. So beginnings, last step in the acceptance of a personal loss, experimenting and completion occur. Endings, the first step in the acceptance of personal loss, uh, emotional standstill, denial, and anger occur. A neutral zone transition phase in which uncomfortable feeling of helplessness and bottoming out take place before recovery begins, right? You feel very helpless. There's nothing that you could do. Uh, you kind of bottom out and become depressed. And then regression. And you know, you never want to regress in anything in life, but, but it does happen. Uh, so if you do regress, remember that you can still progress even though you have regressed. Uh, and our regression is slipping backward into an earlier stage of growth. Uh, you know, that happens sometimes in the workplace. Uh, you try to... Uh, buy for a position, you don't get it, and then you say, you know what, I might as well just give up and, and, and just go back to what I was doing before. Don't do that. Keep pushing, and uh, good things will definitely happen. Uh, Helmstetter's six steps of dealing with change. Uh, these are very good steps that can assist us all as human beings. So recognize and understand the change. So what's the change? I recognize it. I understand it for what it is. I accept it, and I, I work towards uh, moving forward. Uh, make the decision to accept or reject the change, right? So you can accept the change and you can also reject it. Uh, but, you know, I, I will say word to the wise in the, in the, in the workplace, uh, there, there's some changes that you may not necessarily uh, want to uh, reject or you'll be rejected and, and find yourself without a place of employment. Uh, choose the attitude you're going to have toward the change, right? So you choose it. Don't let that change affect you and change you into a different individual. You say, you know what? I may not like this change, but I'm going to have a good attitude about it, and I'm always going to have a good attitude in regards to what I do. Uh, choose the style that you're going to use to deal with the change. Uh, you know, some people say, oh, well, it's, it's only going to be either be passive or aggressive, but you can be proactive. You can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get out in front of this. I'm going to learn how to use this new computer system uh, quicker and better than everybody else, and I'm going to become the subject matter expert. Uh, choose the action that you're going to take every day, right? So, you know, every day it's a choice. You can wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to get after it. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to have a happy day. I'm going to go make me a, a juice. Or you can say, you know what? This day is dragging by. I'm going to go to Starbucks. I need a coffee to wake up. And work sucks. And I'm going to go in there with a the bad attitude. You, you make that choice. You make that decision. And review the steps and evaluate your progress daily, right? So you want to uh, figure out uh, you know, uh, did I do the right thing today? Did I do the wrong thing today? Uh, are there different things that, that I can improve upon? And, and I definitely uh, have learned to, to kind of look back on my days and see what I've done wrong and see how I can actually uh, improve and move forward as an individual. Organization, organizational change, and it happens to everyone. Some of the examples I always give is that a company I work for, uh, we were allowed to come in at 8.30 and get paid uh, as if we came into the office at 8 o'clock, which was great. But then the company took it away. It was an organizational change. We also got paid out for our sick days at the end of the year. I never called in sick. At the end of every year, I got a $1,000 paycheck. Well, organizational change, they took that away as well. And so that's something I just had to had to get used to. No no need to stop my feet and fold my arms, just something that I have to deal with. So it's a change that a group of, of people must accept and implement, right? So I had to accept the fact that uh, you know that I was going to have to come in at eight o'clock, and I also had to accept the fact that uh, I was no longer going to get a thousand dollar check at the at the end of the year. Uh, companies prefer a traditional approach instead of uh, adopting a new one. Uh, models, the Lewin change model, force field analysis, and logical uh, incrementalism. Uh, so the Lewin, cha L Lewin change model, so it's unfreezing, moving to another condition, and then refreezing. So what happens is, and I'll use my example, so you unfreeze. Hey, Demetrius, you can no longer come at 8.30. Uh, you have to come into the office at 8 o'clock. 
moving to another direction. That's now that I'm coming into the office at 8 o'clock. And refreeze, now I've become accustomed to the fact that I have to come to the office at 8 o'clock, right? So you say, uh, in the unfreezing, you can you can notify them of the change. So Demetrius, I'm going to let you know 30 days ahead of time that, that this change is going to occur. Then we move to the, the another condition, and you've had enough time to cope with it and get used to it and, and make certain arrangements. And then uh, we refreeze and say this is the new policy, and um, you're going to just have to get used to it. So criticisms of the Lewin uh, change model says refreezing is not a realistic concept due to the following. Taking the time to refreeze would hinder progress, and uh, environmental and technological changes make uh, refreezing un unrealistic. So there are always going to be detractors for different models uh, that you see in this book and, and everywhere else and every other book in life. Uh, but uh, what I always say is take take the best things from each each one, each model, each different type of uh, you know format that you see. And, and take a little bit of that and use it uh, for the best that you can be. Uh, force field analysis, so you have driving forces on one side, you have restraining forces on the other, and you have the status quo in the middle. And, uh, you know, they're, they're coming to a head, uh, you know, not necessarily a, the biggest uh, fan of that. Uh, I will say, you know, one of the things we'll talk about later is, you know, what happens when you're a change agent, which I am, and uh, you implement changes, and individuals don't necessarily like those changes. They would be over here. They would be those restraining forces. You know, we're, you know we don't want to do that. I'm the driving force saying, hey, you know, we need to get away from the status quo. We need to do something new. Uh, force field analysis, so the status quo is fought by following forces, driving forces, try to take over and change the status quo. And that's typically me, uh, but I'm typically doing it to try and enhance and improve the organization. Uh, restraining forces try to defend the status quo. And that's typically everybody in my organization because they're like, ah, Demetrius, what's wrong with the way that we've been doing it? Uh, it's not broke, so uh, don't fix it. But to them, it's not broke. Uh, but to me, it's broke because it's not uh, garnering uh, as much uh, profitability as as we as we could uh, positive attributes it gets the changers to uh, plan for change right so it gets those you know you're, you're able to say okay I can plan for this change that's coming allows for a close look at the forces uh, likely to restrain right so I'm looking at these individuals and why are they restraining why are they pushing so much against uh, what I'm trying to implement It's because they're they're lazy and they don't want to change uh, they're not progressive or they think if I figure out their secrets then I'm gonna go ahead and fire them and bring in uh, more qualified individuals uh, analysis of the restraining forces uh, before a conflict starts uh, can keep it from beginning at all, right? So just read that uh, again. It says analysis of the restraining forces, right? Who are the in individuals trying to stop this before a conflict starts can keep it from beginning at all? Let's say I sit down with those in individuals and get their input and see exactly why they are pushing or restraining against this, this change. And then maybe we can work together towards a positive solution. A logical incrementalism, uh, it's a five-step process to implement change uh, in a large organization, uh, acknowledges that bringing about changes in large organizations is usually time-consuming and complicated, right? It's hard to get people to change, even if it's a positive change. I've had individuals, I said, hey, you no longer have to do this report, and then they continue to do the report. I said, why are you continuing to do the report? They said, well, I... I think that you may come back and say that we, we need the report later on. But I told you you don't need to use the report anymore, and I'm your direct manager, right? So some of these things just definitely don't make uh, make sense. Uh, address change at the individual and corporate level, right? So you have to address it with individuals, and you also have to address it all across uh, the company. Stages of logical incrementalism, uh, general concern, broadcasting a general concern or idea without details, development of a formal plan for change, right, so steps one, two, three, four, five uh, on how we're going to implement this change, uh, using uh, opportunity uh, or crisis to begin the change, right, so you did it your way, you messed up, let's go ahead and do it my way and an ongoing adaptation uh, of the plan, right? So ongoing, uh, you know, to get them adapted to the plan and, and further engrossed in what those changes are. So why do employees risk change? We've got some great videos that are logged into your uh, your module sections on resisting change. So a uh, high level of comfort with the existing status quo. They just don't want to change. They want to just come in and do the same thing every day. They hear only uh, what uh, one wants or expects to hear. Uh, the fear of the unknown and the fear of loss. Uh, I like the unknown. I like surprises, but a lot of people just don't like that. Uh, resentment of the change agent. I get that a lot because I'm the change agent. They, they resent me. Change agent is a person responsible for organizational change effort. 
uh, and it's a belief uh, that the change is wrong or they have resentment or distrust uh, of the a method used or rebellion against uh, the speed of the change. I come in there and I try to change things uh, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so you have a few more slides that you have to review. Uh, go ahead and check those out uh, and uh, read your chapter. Uh, as always, have a good day and a great week.